We have such an unhealthy nation, whether it's heart disease or diabetes or obesity or cancer. And what we are trying to do with Food Solutions is isolate those particular conditions and highlight the science and then translate that science into something that's understandable and usable and practical. Essentially, it's the science to the plate. I spent many years as a child and even into adulthood being a patient. And there were very few medical professionals who said to me, well, you know, maybe you need to look at what you're eating. Okay? And those who did handed me a stack of papers and said, you know, you really need to focus on eating, you know, more whole foods, stay away from wheat, do this, do that. And I would walk out of the office and I'd be like, what? What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Many years ago, I was fortunate enough to start cooking in a health food store as my summer job. So I started to educate myself. And over the years, I've called on that experience to help guide me through the challenges that I face. And then I turned my personal journey into a professional one and now work one-on-one -on -one with people to help them make food lifestyle changes. This is a, a topic that's really professionally and personally near and dear to my heart, uh, my brain, because I try to stay so actively engaged in the research in this area, and my cells as a cancer survivor of 20 years. Diet not only prevents cancer, but it slows the progression of cancer, it reduces the, recur the recurrence of cancer, and it extends the survival from cancer. Most of us know why we need to make these changes to get healthy but many of us don't know how to make these changes. I've devoted my life's work to giving people the knowledge and skills to make these lasting changes. The kind of frustration that we see when it comes to diet, I find can often be a matter of time. So working with someone like Stephanie, who is really uh, my kind of go-to person who works with my patients, sometimes I say, you can come back to me for six sessions while I tell you what to do, or you can go to Stephanie and she can show you what to do. So we've got some sliced shiitake mushrooms here that we'll put in. Now shiitake mushrooms, um, along with my talking mushrooms and some other mushrooms out there are anti-cancer. Growing up, my grandmother lived with us and um, she was the main chef of the house. So in addition to amazing home-cooked Chinese meals every night, she would often use Chinese medicine or Chinese food as medicine in the form of mushrooms, herbs. But I would continue to revisit and rethink about this throughout my entire medical education. And here I am today, really excited that food and diet in the treatment of cancer are slowly nudging its way into mainstream medicine. Some of my clients actually mostly if I'm dealing with cancer patients, need to gain weight. And so I would make something like a hummus with tahini, but then there are a lot of clients who don't want to gain weight and they want to maintain a weight. So because the tahini is caloric, because it's a sesame seed butter, I don't put it in. What you find is that you find these mainstream cooking shows and they'll just cook hummus one way, or they'll make hummus one way, or they'll do something else another way, and they don't ever talk about the alternative options. And so that's part of what I do in working with clients is that I'm always talking about the alternative options. On my 30th birthday, actually, I sat in a hospital room with a man I called my husband for six years, Rand Skolnick, and was told that he had a tumor on his pancreas um, that had spread through his liver and pretty much everywhere else and uh, was given three to six months to live. I was very lucky to be having a conversation with a friend who mentioned you should go and talk to someone at the Natural Gourmet Institute because they train people to use food as medicine. We started really with teas, smoothies, soups. Um, in a matter of weeks, we were able to actually sit at the dinner table together again and enjoy a meal. And uh, it was one of the best blessings that I uh, could ever have thought of. And food was truly and again, we tried everything, the only thing that was able to do this. There are so many people in the health field who speak about health but have never lived through any type of illness. I'm so deeply passionate about it. I walk the walk, I talk the talk. I've lived it my whole life to 
get well and to continue to be well. And I want to help others to get well. It would be a shame to waste this knowledge and skills. And I feel that it is my social responsibility to get it, get this information out there. Ready? Yeah, I make another one. Oh yeah, we're making. We're making I, I, I mix it yourself, and you can see the flavors. Every couple of minutes, jump back, take a look, you know, and mix it again. Very easy ways that you can feed children. You know, you have to think. The project. What's your dough? All right. Well, I think it's a different uh, type of. Touching food or smelling food or you're going to encourage a, a comfortable relationship with food.